Weather happens all day, every day, all over the world, and it can really impact your day. A hurricane can hurt every person, place, animal, and plant it touches. A snowstorm can cause dangerous driving conditions. A heat wave can ruin food crops and cause health problems too. Hey, I'm Max Orbit talking about weather because weather is way cool. We see weather, we hear about it, and we talk about it. But what is weather? Let's find out. A simple definition is that weather is what is happening in the air around us at any one time. But what makes weather happen? Why are there tornadoes? Where do hurricanes come from? And what about snowstorms? We can answer all those questions and more. So let's get started. Scientists who study the weather are called meteorologists. Meteorologists try to predict or forecast what the weather will be. Using computers, radar, and weather satellites, they are able to forecast changes in the weather fairly accurately. Before weather predicting technology, people looked to nature for clues about what the weather would be. For example, seeing birds flying south meant that cold weather was on its way. When people saw bees busy at work, that was a sign of nice weather. People also believed that if they saw a cow lie down, it meant that rain was on its way. And a bright red sky at night meant there was nice weather on the way. Today, meteorologists use high-tech equipment to keep track of changes in the atmosphere. The atmosphere is all the air that surrounds the Earth. The atmosphere is made up of five layers of gases that surround the Earth. The layer closest to the Earth is called the troposphere. The next layer up is the stratosphere, then the mesosphere, the thermosphere, and the top layer is called the exosphere. Weather happens only in the layer closest to the Earth, the troposphere. There are three things that are needed to make weather. They are air, water, and heat. To understand how weather works, we need to understand wind, currents, and air density. Density is the comparison of how heavy something is to the space that it occupies. Here's what I mean. When air is cold, the air molecules are very close together. When air begins to warm, the air molecules begin to move faster and move apart from each other. Cold air has more molecules in the same space than warm air. Therefore, cold air is heavier and more dense than warm air. Warm air is lighter and less dense. That's why cold air sinks and warm air rises. Air begins to move when the sun heats the land and warms the air above. Warmer air pushes upward because it is less dense. At the same time, heavier, cooler air is drawn in to replace the warmer, rising air. Air that moves up and down is called an air current. Air that moves on the same level is called wind. Air pressure is how much weight the air is pressing down on the Earth. When cool, dense air presses down on the Earth, the air pressure is usually high. High pressure usually brings nice weather. When warm air rises away from the Earth, the air pressure is usually low. Low pressure usually brings clouds and rain. Changing air pressure brings winds. Wind blows from areas of high pressure to low pressure. If there isn't a big difference in the pressure, we get gentle winds. If there's a big difference in the air pressure, winds can become violent. So you can see that it is very important for meteorologists to be able to measure air temperature and air pressure. They can do both with weather instruments. To measure how hot or cold the air is, meteorologists use a thermometer. A thermometer tells the temperature of the air. To measure air pressure, meteorologists use a barometer. Water also plays a very important part in weather, and there is certainly a lot of water on Earth. About 75% of the Earth is covered by water. All over the world, water is constantly moving up into the sky through the process of evaporation. Evaporation is the process of liquid water changing to a gas or water vapor. Here's what happens. 
The water molecules in the puddle gain energy from the sun, air, or ground, and then gradually escape into the atmosphere as water vapor. When up in the sky, the water vapor cools and changes back into a liquid. This process is known as condensation. This never-ending cycle of evaporation and condensation is known as the water cycle. It's the sun's heat that makes liquid water on Earth evaporate and mix with the air. Great amounts of water from Earth's oceans, rivers, and lakes are always evaporating. As the water vapor rises in the air, it cools. Then the water vapor condenses back to liquid water. It's important for meteorologists to be able to measure the amount of water or humidity in the air. And they do that with a weather instrument called a hygrometer. Let's play a round of weather facts. Here's question number one. Weather happens in the layer of the atmosphere closest to the Earth called the A, troposphere, B, exosphere, C, mesosphere, or D, all of the above? The correct answer is A. Weather happens in the layer of the atmosphere closest to the Earth called the troposphere. Here's question number two. To make weather, you need three things. They are A, sand, plants, and rocks, B, people, places, and things, C, air, water, and heat, D, gravity, forces, and electricity. The correct answer is C. To make weather, you need three things. They are air, water, and heat. Here's question number three. The process of liquid water changing to a gas or water vapor is called A, life cycle, B, evaporation, C, condensation, or D, molecular fusion? The correct answer is B. The process of liquid water changing to a gas or water vapor is called evaporation. Clouds also play a very important part in weather. Did you ever wonder how clouds are formed? Well, during the water cycle, when the water vapor condenses on particles of dust, it forms very tiny droplets of water, or ice. These tiny drops make up clouds. Clouds are masses of water droplets. There are many different kinds of clouds. Cirrus clouds are thin, white clouds that have fuzzy edges that look like feathers. Cirrus clouds are made of ice. The large, puffy clouds you see in the sky are called cumulus clouds. You can see puffy, white cumulus clouds when the weather's nice. But cumulus clouds can change and become dark gray. Dark gray cumulus clouds can bring rain showers. There are other kinds of clouds that cover the whole sky. They're called stratus clouds. Stratus clouds may bring rain or snow. When stratus clouds move close to the ground, we call them by another name, fog. When water falls from clouds, we call it precipitation. Precipitation is when water condenses into droplets and then falls from the clouds. Water can fall in many different forms depending on the temperature. Temperature determines if water will fall as rain, snow, sleet, or hail. Sometimes storms can become violent. Tornadoes, hurricanes, and thunderstorms are examples of violent storms. But how do they happen? Thunderstorms happen when hot, moist air rises fast and cools quickly. Dark clouds form and big drops of rain or hail fall. Lightning occurs when ice crystals in the clouds rub against each other, giving them an electrical charge. Lightning heats up the air, which expands rapidly, to make the sound we call thunder. Thunder and lightning happen at the same time. We see lightning first because light travels faster than sound. Did you know there are about 2,000 thunderstorms happening around the world at any one time? And that lightning strikes the Earth as often as 100 times per second. Now, let's take a look at one of the most violent storms on the Earth. 
tornadoes. Tornadoes happen over land, when there is a huge difference in the air pressure and cold air tries to squeeze under the warm air. This creates a violent battle. Tornadoes are spinning tunnels of clouds that have the power to suck up everything in their way. Hurricanes are much larger than tornadoes and can measure up to 300 miles wide. Hurricanes begin as small thunderstorms over warm water. Hurricanes form when warm, moist air rises. From space, you can notice that the air begins to swirl around. As it swirls over the ocean, it sucks up more and more water vapor. The result is a hurricane. Hurricanes consist of heavy rains and very high wind speeds that can cause violent ocean waves and lots of damage to land areas. Fortunately, as hurricanes pass over land, they die out. Let's play another round of weather facts. Here's question number one. Another name for rain, snow, sleet, and hail is A, liquidation, B, temperature, C, alienation, or D, precipitation. The correct answer is D. Another name for rain, snow, sleet, and hail is precipitation. Question number two. Lightning heats up the air, which expands rapidly to make the sound we call A, sound agitation, B, thunder, C, vapor, or D, cloud noise. The correct answer is B. Lightning heats up the air, which expands rapidly to make the sound we call thunder. Here is question three. Hurricanes begin as small thunderstorms and form when A, cold air rises over land masses, B, warm, moist air rises, C, clouds collide, or D, volcanoes erupt. The correct answer is B. Hurricanes begin as small thunderstorms and form when warm, moist air rises. In studying the weather, scientists noticed that there are certain patterns of weather in different parts of the world. They discovered that weather in one area of the world is similar from one year to the next. These weather conditions are known as climates. Climate is the pattern of weather for a certain place. There are three climate zones in the world. The climate of a place depends mostly on how far away it is from the equator. The equator is an imaginary line that runs around the center of the Earth. At the equator, the sun's rays hit the Earth directly. This makes areas around the equator very hot. The climate near the equator is called the tropical zone. At the southernmost part of the Earth and the northernmost part of the Earth are the south and north poles. The sun's rays are more spread out, so the ground cannot warm up quickly. Both these areas of the Earth are always cold, and they're called polar zones. Between the equator and the poles, there's another climate zone we called temperate. Temperate climates have four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Seasons happen because the Earth tilts back and forth as it goes around the sun. As the Earth moves, some places on Earth are tipped closer to the sun. That makes it a warm season. Places further from the sun make it a cold season. That's why it's winter in the northern temperate zone when it's summer in the southern temperate zone. Polar climates have only two seasons. They have six months of summer followed by six months of winter. In the tropical climates, the tilt of the earth doesn't affect the weather too much. It feels warm all year long, but tropical climates do have two seasons, either wet or dry. Tropical seasons are determined by wind direction. In the summer, the winds blow off the oceans, bringing lots of rain. In the winter, they blow off dry land, causing a hot, dry season. All right, let's play another round of weather facts. Here's question number one. The climate near the equator is called the A, rainforest, B, tropical zone, C, polar regions, or D, safety zone. 
correct answer is B. The climate near the equator is called the tropical zone. Here's question number two. Spring, summer, autumn, and winter are seasons that occur in A. Tropical and polar climates. B. The ocean habitat. C. Mid-sized climates. Or D. Temperate climates. The correct answer is D. Spring, summer, autumn, and winter are seasons that occur in temperate climates. Here's question number three. Seasons happen because A. Cold air rises. B. The earth tilts as it goes around the sun. C. The sun tilts toward the earth. Or D. The earth tilts as it goes around the moon. The correct answer is B. Seasons happen because the earth tilts as it goes around the sun. Weather. It affects everything on our planet. And now you know just how weather works. Weather is way cool.